Hey everybody, Randy here in the Eastwood Garage. Thanks for joining us for another live video on Facebook, YouTube, and at eastwood.com. Don't forget to follow and subscribe so you're notified when we go live. And if you're watching us on YouTube, there should be a bell icon in the top corner. Make sure you click that so you are notified. Today we're talking about box and pan brakes. And we've got Matt here who's going to show you how to make a battery tray. And before I, before I forget, or so I don't forget him today, Scotty C, everybody's favorite lead tech advisor, is sitting over here, ready to answer all your questions. He's never been stumped, have you, Scott? Yeah, I get some from time to time. I got to look stuff up. There's, there's been times. You've had to look something up. Yes, I have. But the information's on our website, I bet. Not always. And easy to find. Most times. Play along, yes. say yes. All <laughs> yes. the information you'll ever want it's is at eastwood.com. It's on the website, yes. Yes, yes, it is, <laughs> as well as all of our videos. So if you have any questions, um, post them in the comments. Scott will answer them or, or he'll throw them back to us. So Matt, what do we got going today? Yeah, so today we're gonna just do a quick, uh, we, we made up a little battery tray here. So if you have, you know, if you're building a custom car or, you know, a race car, or maybe you're just doing a restoration where the battery tray is rotted out, uh, this is a common little thing that you can make, a quick little project. Uh, we rolled some beads in it to make it so that it's strong and it's not gonna bend. And we figured we'd show you guys, we got these new uh, finger brakes that we are launching. Yeah, and we got 12, 24, and 48. Yeah, so the, yeah. Um, you know, depending on the size of your shop, we got one that'll fit, you know, kind of fit your needs. If you got a larger shop, of course, we got the big boy in the back that you can, uh, you can do some larger stuff with. Which is coming soon. Yes. Actually. Yes. That one's coming very soon. 12 and 24 are currently in stock. Yep, right on the site. So uh, I figured I'll show you guys. I made up this panel where we already did the bead rolling uh, in it, and we cut our corners out. So this is what we started with. And for any of you guys that are subscribed to our YouTube channel, we'll put together a little video of the whole process that'll uh, be on, the, on our YouTube channel next week. So you guys can watch you know, how we laid out the panel, uh, use the pattern and everything like that. So if we want to get in closer here, we'll show you the, the actual brake and some of the features of it. So the finger brake, a nice thing with it is that it has these little fingers or leaves that you can take out. Now, not only can you take them out, um, they have a little threaded inserts here that you can slide around. So we can move these around however we want to fit whatever yeah. shape we want, however the bends are. And why this is important, a normal brake, uh, if, we if we went to bend a box, we'd bend each side, and we bend these two sides and we go to turn it, it's going to come into itself. We're only going to be able to bend it maybe you know, 10, 15 degrees before it's going to hit itself and we can't complete it. So with this, uh, if you set your leaves just right or your fingers just right, you can let it slip in between and it'll slip right in there and fit in. So what we've done, I think we got this all set up yesterday from yesterday still. Um, we're gonna show you making a couple of these bends on here. So. Yeah, so what we've done is we've already moved the fingers around um, to make it a little quicker. And you could set with this, uh, we already have the adjustments kind of set, but with this you could set the, uh, the leaves on the top here, you can actually set the distance that they are away, depending on the uh, the angle of the brake that or angle of the bend that you're looking to do. You can set that. Um, you can also set for material thickness. There's a handle here on the side. Oh boy. Uh, these the handle on the side or the the larger one has two handles. Uh, there's an adjustment here on the side, where you, like a turnbuckle that you can turn to actually set the clamping force. You want it so that it's um, it's enough so that the panel's not going to move around, but not so much that you're over torquing it and could actually damage the tool. Um, so we got that kind of already set up here. And you can really bend, you can bend up to 135 degrees with this. Yep. So yeah, you can bend over handy. center with it, which is, which is nice. So we'll do our first, first bend here. And if you, depending on what you're doing, you can have a protractor sitting there just to check your, your bend. I'm going to assume your work's perfect. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> If I can do that. Yeah. At least for this demonstration. Yeah, always. But depending on the metal you're using, you know, there might be spring back, so you may need to adjust it a little bit. I mean, when you're working with thinner stuff like this, this is 20 gauge steel. Uh, you know, usually you can manipulate it a little bit by hand and it's no problem at all. And, and these brakes are all rated for uh, 16 gauge aluminum, 20 gauge steel. So we did our two bends there. Now this is where the the fingers really come into play. Yeah, so if we you were, could do that with a regular brake. Yeah, that's no problem. So you know, if this was imagine this was a regular brake here, I get on my bend line. If I went to bend this up, 
you know, you could see already after a few degrees, we're going to be hitting. It's not going to work for us. So what we've done is you can sneak over into here, and I have these leaves set up so that, actually, I just noticed that one needs to be snugged up. Make sure they're all square. And get them down. So when you want to set them, it looks like this one, maybe from us doing the bends, is a little, needs to be tightened up. So you can set it down, put a, a light tension. I don't have it clamped down. And what that does is it squares everything up to the base here so that we're sure everything's where it needs to be. We're good to go. And, like, and they're removable because we, we, took, we took one of them out yeah. as well, as well as moved them around. Yeah, yeah, moved them around a little bit. I think we stacked. This, yeah. this small one here was ended up being over there, and we wanted to get it to span as much of the... And we got lucky at... About exact. Yeah. If it's not, you can leave spaces. In, I mean, sometimes you may have to use a bunch of small ones, and you can leave a couple spaces in between them if you want small spaces. Um, you know, and just try to match up the edges, the corners. Yeah, as, lo as long as most of the uh, you know the piece is being held down, it's going to follow the bend through. Um, set that guy up there. And like I mentioned, you can set the, uh, you can actually set the leaves so that they're, the fingers, so they're further back. Um, so that if you want to do a more gentle bend, you can do that. So right there, I was just a little over 90. It touched. So right there's about 90. So now you can just flip it around, put it back in? Yes, yeah, so now we flip it around. Once you get it all set up, you know, probably takes the most time is just getting everything set up honestly you know, all right they, scott uh do we have any questions now we're doing good right now you guys are cruising along answering them all as usual <laughs> they, they haven't stumped you yet have they no not yet that's amazing except for the newest one rue got me just a second ago but I, I luckily i was able to contact the product manager and get the right answer for him <laughs> you, were, you, you were able to contact eastwood tech support and get an answer <laughs> <laughs> So again, that one's just a little over 90. It's like an exact fit. It's right there. Check that out. That was so, pretty quick. Yeah. So aside from having to, you know, just snug that stuff up, but you know, we got a little pan made up. Now we can just take these corners, take a hammer and dolly, and tap them together, get them to fit real nice, and then we can, uh, you know, weld, weld up, up each of the corners, and you got something you're ready to use. Yeah. And like, like Matt was saying, we're going to have a video on our site showing the whole process yep. since we already rolled the beads um, to make a battery tray. And, you're, and the reason, if you're not familiar with bead rolling, is to add strength. I mean, it adds some appearance, too. Yeah. Because you put yeah. a little design in it, but it also adds strength. Otherwise, it would be flopping around. Yeah, that piece would be, would be uh, popping in and out on it. So, so um, yeah, if, if you're interested in any of these brakes, we've got the 12, the, 20, the 24 in stock. The big one, the 48-inch behind us, um, that one would be in stock very soon. And um, they're at eastwood.com. They'll do 16 gauge uh, uh, aluminum and they'll do 20 gauge steel. And you can bend over center all the way over to 135 degrees as well. So should we do one more demo quick? Yeah, sure. Or maybe not so quick, but do one more demo for anybody who's just joining us. Yeah, and again, if you need to change any of the settings on this, in the back here, uh, there's an area where you can loosen and uh, you can turn this to set the distance forward and back of the fingers and over here there's a little turnbuckle that you can change uh, you can adjust so you can set for material thickness yeah. so pretty quick and easy I mean it just takes um, you know one or two tools for each of them and you can and if you're not familiar if you come over here to the 12 inch you can see all these all the fingers here like here's a wide finger then there's one a little smaller 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 yet so um, it allows you you can take them out or you can rearrange them and basically to make a box, you're probably always going to have to take one of them out, like, like we've done over here. So that gives you the space that you need. So, so after you have some sides bent up, it'll allow you to bend another side, and um, those sides that are bent will go in those gaps. And, and you know, uh, we got lucky. Uh, on the one we've used, the one we're using, to, to save some time, we already moved them. Um, but it's just with a, an Allen key. You unscrew them, you can take them out or you can just slide them around. And we kind of did both. We took one out, we moved the other ones around, slid them. Cause, so now that he did those two bends, which as we said, you could do with any break, 
Um, if Joe, you can see the gaps. Matt, if you can point to the two gaps where it's going to fold up into. Yeah, yeah. So right here and then over in here. This gap's larger. Just you know, it's not too crucial. But I kept the gap tighter here because when I was bending this bend, I actually spanned that yeah. area there. So I, I left the gap a little tighter in there. All it really needs to be is just material thickness mm -hmm. or a little larger so they can fit in between. That, that's all it really needs to be. Um, but of course, if you give yourself, if you have the room, you know, by all means, give it so you can, you're not running into the, uh, into the side. And if you're just looking for a regular brake, we've got, you know, we've got a regular brake as well, but these pan, box yeah. pan brakes are pretty sweet. Yeah, and you can use them, you know, obviously for a regular brake, yeah. just put all your pieces back in, all your fingers. See right there, that little corner had a little spot in it. And if you're not uh, familiar with our lives, we go live every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 3 o'clock Eastern Time. Uh, so yesterday we, uh, we did welding helmets. Sometimes it's a demonstration. Uh, sometimes it's new products. Mondays are usually new products. Uh, Wednesdays we try to do customer favorites. And, but we kind of combine new products and customer favorites uh, today. While you're filming, is there a chance that Joe could get behind it and show the, the back of the brake? We have a request to see you know, the full workings of it, maybe even while Matt's bending. There's really nothing happens behind it, but we can, we can, we can show. Here. Or I can turn one of them around. Yeah, why don't we, do, why don't we spin the... Uh, while I'm bending this, yeah. Randy can, sw can, you can't really. can uh, spin it around. You guys can see the backside. They're all fairly similar. Yeah, just the difference in size. But this... Interesting. In so... And then basically, if you want to see, there's not, there's not a whole lot of moving parts on. So and there, that's clamping it down. And, those and the then there's the bending. This is from behind. All right, so there's another just a simple box. Yeah, so, you know. We didn't roll beads in that one ahead of time. That was a. But the, uh, you know, the, the, most of the time is spent in laying it out and mm -hmm. rolling the beads. I mean, bending it, once you get your brakes set up, it's really quick um, and really easy. So, yeah, this is handy for making, you know, boxes, brackets, even if you're doing something, um, like I ran into, I wish I would have had one of these this past weekend, I was making box section for an A-pillar. Mm -hmm. It comes around and makes a pinch weld. Yep. And that last bend, I just couldn't do it in a Versa bend. I had to do it by hand with a handmade tool. But yeah. this, you can do all kinds of tight bends together back on itself because it's can go under yeah, battery cars. trees, battery boxes. You make bigger boxes. Yep. Probably a, a truck bed floor patches where yep. you got a bunch of things right. and shapes. Any any other questions here, Scott? Yeah, there's a good one for Matt actually. Oh. Uh, okay. Rue wants to know when you're gonna get back on Pile House. <laughs> Hasn't seen oh. it in a while. That is. Uh, are, you, are you working on it some? No, uh, finishing up the coupe, the Pagoda City coupe that we. Uh, um, we did a bunch of videos on building the chassis, and I'm getting back on that. That is, uh, that's, I got a new garage space that I have a lot more room to work, so I don't have to move that thing around. So here soon, I'll start getting back on that thing and do all the boring work that's left. I did all the cool stuff for you guys in videos. Yeah. Now I got to do door gaps and boring things that I don't want to do, but it needs to be done to get the thing ready for paint. So yeah, soon I'll get back on it. I appreciate the heckling. That's so it. That yeah. I, I want to work motivated. on it. <laughs> yeah, get motivated. me motivated. Yep. All right. Well. Thanks for joining us. If you're interested in our 12 or 24 inch pan break, click the link to visit eastwood.com. As we said, the large 48 inch um, box pan break is coming soon to Eastwood. And uh, don't forget to join us every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at three o'clock Eastern time for our live interactive videos. And uh, thanks a lot, Matt. Yeah, thank you, appreciate it. All right. Catch you guys later.